creative friends. My name is Miss Karen. Yes, I called you creative because that's what you are. Usually we think of creativity as painting or writing or singing and that's all true. We can definitely be creative through art and music, but there's so much more to creativity than just paint and singing. Creativity is imagining what you could do because you're made in God's image. You see, God's creativity is indescribable. It's limitless. It goes beyond what we could ever imagine. So if we're made in God's image, we are creative. Take a look at the faces all around you. Some of you see friends. Some see parents. Some see brothers or sisters. Some see combed hair. Some see messy hair. Some see blue eyes. Hmm, but look past all of that and see what I see. Do you see it? I see faces that are lovely. No, mm, magnificent. Mm, no, no. They are masterpieces. Yes, that's it. They are pieces of art worthy of being immortalized in the halls of Snyder Memorial Baptist Church for the rest of, well, today anyway. I need some help from you to capture the faces of those around you in a game that we like to call Face Off. Any budding Picassos out there? Fantastic. This game is simple. I will give you 60 seconds to go find paper, markers, or crayons, and a mirror. Are you ready? Go! Did you get everything you need? Great. I know some of you are asking, why a mirror? Well, I want you to use the mirror to draw a selfie. Yes, you heard that correctly. You need to draw a selfie that looks just like you. Oh, and one more thing. You only have 60 seconds to draw your selfie. Are you ready for face off? On your mark. Get set. Draw! Okay, time's up. Markers down. Everybody, step back from your drawing. Wow, look at that artwork. Who knew that this group was so talented? Great job to all of our artists. That was incredible. Do you wanna see mine? Ta-da!
This challenge has given me the best idea. Have you ever heard of the TV show Nailed It? In that show, contestants try their hand at recreating masterpieces. The projects don't always turn out great, but it's always entertaining and contestants have to be very creative. Well, we are going to have our own Nailed It challenge each week this month. I don't think you had quite enough time to make the best selfie that you could, so your challenge this week is to create a selfie. This time you can have all week long to create it. You can use toys, paper, play-doh, recyclables, paint, nature, Legos, anything you feel like using to complete this challenge. Enjoy being creative and finding new ways to express your ideas. Have an adult email your submissions to karenm at snydermvc.com or post them on our Snyder Kids Facebook or Instagram page. Each week, we will draw a winner who will get a very creative prize. In the New Testament, we can find quite a few letters written by a man named Paul. Paul wrote to believers in different churches. He wanted to encourage them as they tried to follow Jesus. Side note about Paul, he hadn't always been a Jesus follower himself. But once he did decide to put his faith in Jesus, he made it his life's work to encourage others to believe too. In fact, he traveled all over to teach people to, and share with them what it meant to follow Jesus. Paul started a church in Ephesus. The churches back then didn't really look like ours do now. In fact, the believers usually just met in homes. As Paul went around telling people more about Jesus, he was so bold that he actually got in trouble with the Roman government. They didn't want people talking about Jesus. So Paul ended up in jail in Rome. But even though Paul had a good reason to complain, he used his time creatively. He wrote letters to the churches that he had started. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, Inspired by the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 10. When the Apostle Paul wrote his letter to the believers in Ephesus, he told them, We are God's creation. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. Now we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. Let's see how that might play out in someone's life today. Noah Gray followed her older cousin, Sadie, around the pottery studio. Clay dust danced in the sunbeams from high up windows. So I just stay at the desk? Working at the Earth and Fire studio was Nora's first real job, and she wanted to get it right. Sadie grinned and pushed back her hair with a clay flecked hand. Mostly. A bunch of artists have memberships here, so they can use all the equipment and materials. You'll answer questions, take calls, make orders when supplies run out, things like that. What's in there? Nora pointed to an open door near the back of the studio. Oh yes, the closet. Nora led the way over. Sadie peered inside. Wow. The narrow room was lined on both sides with high shelves. Every shelf and every inch of floor space was cramped with a jumble of tools, containers of clay and glazes, cleaning supplies, and pieces of pottery, finished and unfinished. How do you find anything? So many people use the closet. Everyone just kind of has their own system. Nora didn't think the disaster in the closet qualified as a system, but before she could say anything. Oh, I gotta take this. Hello? Oh, hold on a sec. Where did I put my pen? Frazzled, Sadie checked her pockets. Nora quickly pulled a pen and notepad out of her neatly organized backpack. Would this work? Sadie snatched the pen and paper, mouthing, thank you and headed for the desk. Nora surveyed the room. There were at least a dozen artists at work. You a butter too? Nora turned to see an older gentleman with a streak of clay in his curly white hair. His long frame bent nearly double over the nearest pottery wheel. Me? No. Oh, I think everyone's an artist of some kind. I can't even draw a stick figure. Sadie's just letting me work here till I go to college in the fall. Nelson centered a lump of clay on his wheel. 
You'll see me here most every morning. I'm Nelson. Nora. Real nice to have you here. I'm uh, working on a coffee mug if you'd like to watch. Nora watched, mesmerized, as the spinning clay morphed from a stodgy lump to a smooth cylinder under Nelson's practice hands. I wish I could make beautiful things like that. You want to take a turn? Sadie tried to teach me. It was a disaster. Nelson smiled, hands still working the clay. I happen to believe that God made each of us to create beautiful things that matter. You'll find your spot. Nora nodded, but she didn't think she'd ever create a piece of art that could make someone smile. Nora, I want to show you the kiln. Sadie reappeared, and Nora spent the rest of the day learning the ropes of her new job. By early evening, the studio had cleared out. You go home. I can lock up at six, just like you showed me. Well... And I can order more blue glaze, like you said. Well, if you think you got this, that would be great. I can get home early for dinner with the kids. I'm good. Go, shoo. With a wave, Sadie hurried out. Nora opened the supplier's webpage and started to order for glaze. Hmm, I bet there's still blue glaze in the closet somewhere. Nora opened the door and clicked on the light. The mess looked even worse than it had that morning. Is this glaze? Oh, it's those cans. And there's some over here and up there. Nora edged her way around, collecting cans. There's no way to know what's really here unless I can get it all together. I should clear a space. And I should stack those crates to group the colors. Every time Nora moved one can or tool, she discovered six more that needed a place to go. All the cleaning supplies can go down here, modeling tools and loops over there by the door. That's definitely trash. Oh, and there should be a spot for each artist to put their pieces that still need to be glazed. One thing led to another, and another, and another. Nora finally realized she was hungry. Hmm, where did I set my phone? Oh, here, 9.30? Nora had been so focused on organizing the closet, she had completely lost track of time. She glanced with satisfaction at the crate containing five cans of blue glaze. At least I don't need to order more glaze. The next morning, Nora arrived a few minutes late. She rushed in, apologetic. I'm so sorry, Sadie, I- Nora broke off as she saw Sadie, Nelson, and several other artists grouped around the closet door. Nora, did you do this? Um, yeah, uh, I should have asked. Nora, this is amazing! Nora took a step forward to take a good look at what she's done. Glazes and clay, tools and supplies, everything had its own spot in a orderly rhythm. With the morning light streaming in, it did look pretty cool. Nelson grinned. Oh, it's beautiful, Nora. A real work of art. A younger woman with hair knotted on top of her head chimed in. Plus, we can find stuff now. I thought I'd lost this set of mugs. You've made our work a lot easier. Really? I guess. I thought anyone could do this. No way. You have a real gift. Can I organize the front desk? Please, I'm raising your pay. Nora happily tackled her next project, a well-organized desk. She was grateful to discover the truth of Ephesians 2.10 in her own life. We are God's creation. He created us to belong to Christ Jesus. Now, we can do good works. Long ago, God prepared these works for us to do. Here's something that we need to remember. The creativity God gives us isn't just about art and music. God has designed you in a unique way to love Him and to love others. That's what Paul meant by good works. He meant that we can use the unique way that God has designed us to show love to other people. For some people, those creative good works are things like drawing, songwriting, or painting incredible works of art. For someone else, creativity might look totally different, like building a robot or designing cool apps or games making people laugh. No matter how God made you creative, you can use that creativity to help others. 
But before you can use your creativity, you need to believe that you are creative in the first place. And I'm here to tell you that it's true. God created you so you can be creative. Maybe you're thinking, okay, Miss Karen, that all sounds great, but I have no clue how I'm creative. Well, think about it. Think about the things you like to do, the things that you're naturally good at. Ask a parent or a friend what they see in you. Ask God to show you new ways to use your creativity to help those around you. God not only made you creative, but he wants to help you use that creativity. You can trust God no matter what, and you can always ask him for help. Let's thank God for making us creative. Dear God, thank you for creating each one of us, and thank you for making us creative like you. It's so cool how you gave each one of us a unique and different way to use our creativity. Help us to figure out how you made us creative. Then help us to see the needs around us so we can use our creativity to do good works for others. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus name, amen. Our memory verse from the Bible this month tells us this, Lord, you are great. You are really worthy of praise. No one can completely understand how great you are. Our memory verse reminds us how great God is. And God's greatness is just one reason why he's worthy of our praise. Another reason he is worthy of our praise is that there's no limit to God's creativity. When God made us in his image, he gave each of us the ability to think, to act, to feel just a little bit like him. He also gave us the ability to be creative. God created you so that you can be creative in how you praise Him and how you show others that they are important to God. Psalm 147.1 says, Praise the Lord! How good it is to sing praises to our God! How pleasant and right it is to praise Him! Do you know one version even actually says praise is beautiful? I love that. There is so much beauty when we worship, when we sing to God from our hearts. Let's praise Him together. And remember that you are God's creation and you are a child of God. We'll see you next week. I just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna. I just wanna.